2012 and everyone assuming that means the world's going to come to an end then. I mean, realistically, how do the Mayans know? They're they're not a, a real advanced technological society. They're living in the jungle, Central America. How is it that they tap into this knowledge of the future thousands of years? We actually don't know how they got that knowledge. Uh, we do know that their mathematics was actually beyond the mathematics that we have today. Granted, they don't have computers. They can't compute, couldn't compute things quickly. But their mathematics, for instance, in their calendar systems, their calendar systems as it existed back then are far more accurate and precise than our calendar systems are today. Um, where they got that knowledge, we don't know. In fact, they, it was only determined just in the last few years that their, quote, ending date for the era is not really an ending date. It's the ending date of a large cycle, which then starts a new, what they refer to as a new era, um, a new age. Um, it ends on December 21st, 2012, but its ending date corresponds to the closest place that the Earth and our solar system approaches the middle of the galactic plane. And that was only confirmed by our astrophysicists within the last few years using computer models. So how they were able to determine this a couple thousand years ago is, is honestly beyond, you know, our ability to understand. Unless well, let's jump into this now. This... This uh, middle of the galactic plane stuff, that's sort of right at the heart of, uh, of your predictions for bad things to come, right? Well, it's already started. Uh, the galactic plane is a dense gravitational field. The closer you get to the center of it, the more dense the field becomes, and as you pass through it, it becomes less dense. It, it's not a, uh, a paper-thin line in space. It is actually a a spiraling plane that all these stars in our Milky Way galaxy revolve around. And our solar system, with its star, the sun, moves psychically up and down it on a period of, uh, uh, every half period is 11,500 years. Uh, so we're approaching that half period point in just the next few years. But it takes, because of the thickness of the plane and the thickness of our solar system, it takes about 20 years to pass through. We're already about halfway through. It started in 1998 when the Earth started to feel the effects of the pressure wave or gravitational wave exerting from the galactic plane exerting on the solar system. And that the very first effect we saw is the Chandler wobble of the Earth, which was a very, very stable wobble for hundreds of years, suddenly stopped. And now, it has, since then, it has been acting erratic. Um, the next thing we saw is that in the year of a solar minimum, the sun went on a massive rampage, more X-class flares than we've ever seen before. In fact, a couple of the flares were, were beyond what the satellites could measure, and it took out two of the satellites. So they've actually had to redefine the X-class scale. They have, they're guesstimating. They don't know what the most intense flare was because it went off the scale, but they're guesstimating anywhere between an X-28 and an X-43. So just to summarize, you're saying that uh, the changes that are occurring to our planet are the result of our solar system passing through the middle of the galactic plane, right? Right. We reached the closest spot on December 21st, 2012. But that, I, I, yeah. I would think that that would be really hard to calculate. I mean, if you, to, you know, for one thing, as you said, the, the galactic plane is not a line like on the football field or something. It's got to be enormous. And, and, and determining where it is exactly would be pretty tricky since we don't exactly know what the outer edges and, and uh, diameter of, of our solar system are. Or, or have you guys figured that out? Um, the, uh, we don't know where the, or the gal galaxy, not the solar system. I'm we, sorry. We, oh, the, yeah, the solar system, we, we have pretty, pretty well mapped right. out, but right. how the, um, how the Mayans did it, we have no clue. We, we, we can't even comprehend how they could have had such knowledge, but the astrophysicists today do know, have mapped out that we will approach within three degrees of the center of the galactic plane on that date and then start veering away from it. So we, as a solar system, um, uh, have the greatest gravitational force. Due well, that's what I was going to ask you. What is different about the spot where we are in the in the galaxy? What is the physical difference that would affect our planet if we are, our our uh, solar system moves to a different part of the galaxy? Oh, it sounds it sounds like the question is what is the galactic plane? Yeah. I, I I really totally skipped over that. I apologize. Um, the astrophysicists in the last few years 
have concluded that every active galaxy um, has a what they refer to, for lack of a better word, a supermassive black hole in the center of the galaxy. Now, as black holes get larger, they spin faster. And even though small black holes are absolutely solid-packed, uh, dense neutrons, as they spin faster and faster because they get more massive, the inside of the larger black holes start to become more hollow. So that larger black holes are 90%, 90% of all the mass is in a shell, like an eggshell. The, as you increase the black hole even further, or these black holes get larger, the tops and the bottoms open up because you're spinning incredibly fast. They do not know what causes the spin rate to reach a maximum velocity. The faster, the larger it is, the faster it spins. So that when you get to a, a black hole that's four trillion miles across at the center of our galaxy, the top and the bottom have opened up to the point where it's a flat ribbon. It is actually not a sphere. It's a flat ribbon spinning 4,000 miles across, and it looks like a ribbon. Um, the gravitational wave that emanates from that black hole forms the equivalent of like a LP record, a disk, that spins in conjunction with the black hole. So the, the gravitational wave radi out, radiates from there in a flat plane, and it moves in a circle around the black hole. Now, all the stars in the galaxy, the spiral arms of the galaxy, are attracted to the gravitational wave. They do not, they, they have recently concluded that galaxies are formed by A, it's the chicken and the egg scenario. A, the black hole comes first. Then the stars form. They don't know how, but the stars form and psychically move up and down the gravitational plane of the black hole and then around it. Our solar system is one of those stars, and we are moving in a rhythmatic cycle above and below that plane. And this rhythmatic cycle is the cycle that the Mayans computed when we go through the plane, when we come out of the plane. I mean, did they ever actually write that down, the Mayans yes, said? Absolutely, yes, they did. In fact, they referred to it as the dark rift. And they also referred to what scientists would say are attributes of moving into a black hole. In other words, Einstein computed that if you move to a black hole, time and space would be distorted and there would be some sort of dimensional rift. In fact, one of the Mayan legends indicates that when the four corners of the earth, referring to this time coming up, when the four corners of the earth sits on the dark rift, and, they, and we still call it the same thing that the Mayans did, the dark rift, then a cosmic sky portal will be opened up and, quote, holes will be harvested, whatever that means. But it, it seems to imply um, a dimensional rift, which implies a tremendous gravitational uh, force equivalent to that would be generated from a black hole. Did you say souls would be harvested? Yes. Yes. That, that, that's what the Mayans wrote, and, and you, you see some merit in that prediction? Um, our, sci our science is based on uh, science and physical evidence. Um, and what we do see is that the science backs up the fact that the, gra that the gravitational wave from the center of the galaxy – uh, is spinning and causing the stars to revolve up and down cyclically through it and around the galaxy. The astrophysicists today are now uh, have uniformly basically realized and have stated that in the center of every galaxy is an active black hole, a supermassive black hole. Ten years ago, the concept was ludicrous. They yeah. never even knew a black hole even existed in the center of a galaxy, never mind what we're describing now. The, the, the quantum physicists say that the gravitational wave, if such a black hole exists, even this far away from the center of the galaxy if you, would be the equivalent of you actually passing through the black hole itself. In other words, you're bending time and space. And this is the type of concept these sorts of uh, predictions would be, um, I, I guess, written down by ancient prophecies. But okay. the evidence we have, what I want to present, uh, first and foremost, is all the science and what okay. has happened in the past. Then we can get into the prophecy. All right. Well, we'll do that when we come back after this break. We're talking with Brett Miller of the Horizon Project. Stay with us on Coast to Coast AM. Thanks for being with us here tonight, everyone. Uh, a lot of fear and trepidation in the world as we uh, hear various predictions for doom and gloom, end of the world stuff. Our guest is Brett Miller of the Horizon Project, and we're going to ask him, what role does remote viewing play in the uh, development of some of these dark predictions we hear about the end of the world?